All right, the project I hope to get done today is a couple of holsters. These are going to be um, paddle holsters. So they've got a, um, a flat paddle piece that slips in between the belt and the body, and that holds it into place, or the belt and the pair of pants or whatever. Uh, but anyway, I've already started out by drawing up some patterns. Uh, whenever I'm making custom holsters, I just take a tracing of the firearm, roll it across the top of its um, the sights and everything, the top line of it, and then take another tracing. And then from there, I can add onto that a seam allowance and everything I need for the thickness of the firearm and come up with a pattern one way or another. And pretty simple holster pocket style on these because it is just basically that with some extra added around the edge. So one's going to be a Kimber Master Carry, which is kind of its own thing. It's a little bit shorter and uh, wider. But then the other one is basic. It's a Springfield Garrison, which is basically a 1911 as near as I can tell. So I'm going to pretty much have a 1911 pattern that I can distribute from this. Um, but I've already got the pieces cut out from those pattern pieces. And I've got some lining leather that I can line these with. I cut it out of five to six ounce, um, or approximately there at, it's around five ounce. And then I'm going to glue two layers together and that'll make them lined. Pretty much the same with the paddle pieces. I've got some thinner three to four and that same like six ounce leather for the paddle. And then some other spacer pieces that go added onto that. that are cut out of heavier stuff. Um, this is about eight ounce leather that I had scraps of. So from here on out, um, I'm gonna start some stitching grooves and get ready to uh, stamp some stuff on here and get these dyed so we can really get going on this. All right, the one I'm mostly concerned about is the actual holster pocket pattern. And I'm going to do a stitching group all the way around it because I am lining it. I'm going to stitch all the way around it. Now, if you're not lining it, if you just work out of like a eight to nine ounce leather or nine to 10, whatever you prefer for holsters like this, um, You won't need to do as much stitching groove. You'll just have to do it along here where you're going to actually stitch the holster pocket shut. Now these pieces are going to have other pieces added onto them. One's going to be right here, only on the back side. And same with this piece. It's going to be well up here again on the back side and this is going to be the spacer between the holster um, and the paddle this is just going to be a, a piece to make something to catch on the belt so that the holster doesn't pull out um, so for those pieces i need to do some stitching grooves as well but they need to be pretty much inside that area so for this side is not too hard. We're just gonna wrap around. And the same up here. We can kind of mark where it's gonna be. Wrap around. And then we can use a straight edge to go across that other side. And either you can run your stitching groover along the edge of the straight edge or if you have a freehand groover like this little guy, uh, which the camera will not focus on. You can just go across there. don't want it to stretch out of shape when I go to head and stamp it so I'm gonna tape up the back 
And by tape up, I mean I'm just using packing tape to keep it from stretching. Now, these are set up to be right hand holster pockets. So like this is the back of the holster, so that part doesn't really need to be stamped. Um, gonna fold around. This is gonna be the front of the holster on the outside, on the right hand strong side. So this is the part I'm really stamping. Um, so we're just gonna mark ourselves just off center so it kind of wraps around to the back a little bit. We're gonna mark a line. Real lightly like. And then I'm gonna use my uh, wing divider here to mark another line. About double the width of what I've got set for this stitch groove there. Mark our lines in for our first lines with the basket weave tool itself. And let's get going. Alright, and like any time with a basket weave, once you got the first lines in there, you just start filling in the gaps and keep going. Alright, all these pieces are stamped. Let's go ahead and bevel some edges real quick. And then I can go ahead and get some coloring done on these. Um, we're just going to dye one brown and one black. Nothing really exciting or different. This is going to be lined, so I don't need to bevel any of the back of it. I'll have to do that after I trim the, the back piece, which will be later. But I just want to kind of get the first little bit done on this. I could do this after I glue it together and trim it, too. Alright, for dyeing, we're going to do the one that's supposed to be brown first. And there's a, a good reason for that. If you get black dye on your fingers and then know to try and color something brown you might get black spots on it but the other way around is not a problem if you get some brown spots on there the black dye just covers it right up so something to consider if you're working with multiple colors of dye on the same day Alright, and the same thing is true of putting finish on pieces of leather. You want to put it on the brown pieces first because you will pick up a little bit of the dye sometimes. And if you've got the black piece first, you'll spread that around on your brown piece and leave streaks. Alright, next step is to glue these pieces together. I'm going to glue the, the lining pieces in. Kind of my usual way, using barge cement. And 
just like I normally do. I'm going to go ahead and put this together on one side. Keeping it from sticking together entirely. I want to fold it. So that when I go to put it together later, I don't wind up with as many wrinkles on the inside of it. It's more shaped already. This piece, on the other hand, is totally flat. As that is our paddle. And it will have a bit of curve to it eventually, but not enough to make a difference. Let those that glue sit and dry a bit while I glue up the other one, and then I'll trim them off. Okay, I set these aside for a couple hours to do some other stuff, but now it's time to trim them up with my trim knife and then we can finish some edges and start putting stuff together and so on. Not necessarily in that order. There's going to be some finishing edges and then putting stuff together and then more finishing edges. Alright, now let's go ahead and bevel uh, the edges on the back side of this, except for right here where the uh, it's going to attach to a holster up at the top. We don't want to bevel that because we want a nice square edge there that we can finish up later. And meld in with the other ones. So we're going to stop just shy of that. And on this one, the same way, these are going to come together, so we don't need to finish those up. I'm going to square that off later. But I do need to finish up around the top mouth of the holster and the bottom toe of the holster. Let's use a different beveler. Let's use this one. A little wider, but... Does better on those odd shapes. All right, then we're going to finish up edges like I normally do on holsters, uh, the top and the bottom edges. Uh, before I show it, sew it shut, I want to finish some of that up. Um, on this particular one, it's going to be a little different in that I'm going to have a piece sewn onto the back of it up here. I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of grinding to shape that anyway. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and dye it before we get too far into this. All right, for the brown, I'm just going to use, um, I got one of these dye pin marker things. It's I've got loaded with a real dark brown dye called Show Brown. And I'm going to use that on the edges on the brown and then I'll just use black dye on the, the black one. You could use the same color dye that you use on your um, leather at uh, front and back as well on your edges but it really it stands out good if you do a burnished edge that's a darker color like this. Okay now Probably not going to be entirely finished with these pieces until after I've got it all sewn together. But it doesn't hurt to do a little bit of this now. While I'm doing the uh, top and bottom of the holster. Am I being boring? I'm being, I'm being boring. Okay, well, I've got to finish this up. i got to finish these holsters. No, I gotta finish the holsters. All right, not sure how much I actually captured on the camera downstairs around the uh, sewing machine. So I'll go over real quick what, what happened here. Um, I took the paddle piece and I sewed this stop onto the back side of it, inside of it, whatever. Then I sewed the top and bottom of the holster shut, or not shut, but um, sewed the liner to the top and bottom of the holsters. Just sewed through that. Then I sewed, through the spacer, the paddle, 
and the top part of the holster here to put all that together. And finally, I sewed the side seam of the holster that sewed the holster shut. That's where it actually gets shut. Um, then I took it to a grinder, uh, the 1x30 sander, and sanded the edges to match. So there's no color left on these and they need to be beveled again. So right there along those edges, I'm going to bevel those edges real quick like just touch those up touch them up with some dye and put some gum drag on them and finish them up the dog is squeaking currently so not much i can do about that she's got a tennis ball that squeaks when she bites it now we're going to finish all this up a little bit more and then, of course, the final step will be shaping the holster on this brown one. I'm going to do that with some uh, plastic wrap. I'm going to take it to the range when I meet the guy, and I'm going to shape it to his firearm because I don't have anything exactly shaped like that. But on the black one, I do have something shaped like a 1911, so I will use that to shape it. Now, as usual, if I'm going to actually shape this to an actual firearm, um, well, first off, you check and make sure that it is unloaded, and that includes in the chamber. Always include that. Um, but in this case, I always wrap up the firearm in a plastic bag or plastic wrap or something of that nature so that we can protect the firearm from any wet leather because we want to soak the leather down to do this. But then also, that provides that little bit of extra room that lets the holster really work well after it's had a chance to dry. And in this case, the leather's still wet, so it's still sticky, but you can basically see how it's going to fit. We'll just give it a little bit to dry. See where we're at. The other one, I'll have to do it the range. 